Helping learners identify the elements, symbols, notation and conventions of music can be an ever-challenging task. We need to find a range of ways and resources, both physical and digital, to make this work. Well, today we're looking at Didac Music. Hi guys, I'm Anthony, a teacher from the UK. I have 20 years experience teaching primary or elementary music and on this channel, EdTech Music, we look for ways to make the teaching of music more fun, easier and raise standards of practice through technology. Today we're going to look at Didac Music, which is the English version of a website from Spain called Aprendo Music. According to their website, they make educational games to support music teaching. This resource came to me via Twitter and is aimed at primary or elementary learners. Their website is clean and colourful with a range of web-based activities linked off the main page. And the site also contains a blog which frustratingly lacking dates we can't really tell how updated and how recently the content's there but the content that is there is very useful. I'm going to focus on looking at some of the activities with you to get an idea of what's available. This one I particularly like, called Qualities of Music, which is around the elements of music, and it gives you the ability to compare in a really quick and easy way. And here we have to choose which element of music was different in each. Yay! You can see my points are going up over time and I'm getting a good visual and auditory reflection of whether I've got the answer correct or not. This is another one I really like, learning rhythms number one, and let's go to the middle level at the moment to see what that's about. So it's performed the rhythm to me and now I need to have a go at adding the right notation. Let's try again. And let's get it wrong and see what happens. Ah. Oh. Hey. Okay, on to the next. So you can see from the example, it's going to gradually build in difficulty at the time. And I had three levels of challenge to start with. So although this is a very, as I say, appropriate for primary or elementary level learners, the resource is great because it lets you jump straight into the activity. And because it's web-based, I can link straight to this page even, rather than having to send children to the front page and then on from there. Some of the resources on the website come in the form of tutorials or video examples. Let's have a look at this one. So it takes me through to their YouTube channel where the example of plays. So I really like the way that it uses a range of symbols to identify the different parts of the piece of music as well as the traditional ABA format that we teach learners so that they can identify structures in music. A really nice and thoughtful layout. From the video, you can also subscribe to their YouTube channel. Something else available on their site that's very appropriate for primary or elementary learners is recorder resources. When I click on that, I'm taken through to a new set of resources, some of which are to help with fingerings and positions, and some are resources on helping to play pieces. This first one to do with finger positions is really, really helpful. Let's have a look at what happens. <laughs> So here we're getting a visual representation of the notes vertically. We're seeing the notation on the stave with crotchets. And we're also seeing the fingerings on a recorder. And having all of those three things together is a really great way because often you just can't demonstrate everything at once. And having all three vi visuals is, is really nice. I particularly like the way they've got the sharps and flats shown in between the other notes as well. Really nicely done. So why is this useful? Well, at this time of virtual learning and homeschooling, when lots of schools around the world are in various degrees of lockdown and a blended approach where sometimes some children will be at home and some will be in school, having web-based resources is really great because you can use that and access that wherever you are on whatever device you happen to have. 
Secondly, it's simple and clean. There is no subscription paywall behind. It's not a service that you, that you have to convince someone at school to subscribe to. You just go to the website and use the activities. The downside of that is that you don't have some of the more advanced features to do with logging in users and then collecting their results centrally. But without that, it's a simpler resource and easy to use. Thirdly, as the website tells you, it's built on HTML5 activities, not Flash. Now, if you don't know much about this, Flash is a technology that's been around a long time and has been used to make things interactive on the internet. That's being phased out over time, and so HTML5 is a much more compliant technology that will last a longer time, and also it means that it's easier to use on all devices because some browsers don't handle Flash games particularly well. Fourthly, I really like the aspect of it where it's available in multiple languages. So being able to access the site in English or Spanish or German is useful, not just because there may be learners in your classroom that require that as their more comfortable language, but also because it makes links to MFL where you can try the activities in a different language after you've tried them in your own language. And fifthly, because it's free. Now, quite often, you want the facilities that come with subscription services, but it's also nice to be able to have something that you just go to the site and get on with it. And number six, versatility of use. I think a lot of the activities on this site are really nice to introduce and do as a whole class, on your big board or screen at the front, with learners giving ideas or coming up and pressing things themselves. As well as that, I think you can use this really well as a set task for individuals. So however you normally share links to your learners, whether it's via email or a shared notebook or in a presentation that you, you give out or maybe using Teams or, or Google Classroom, however you get links to learners, being able to get this to them individually and then, then be able to practice those tasks themselves in school or at home and come back and visit them at other times is a really, really nice way of using it. And thirdly, to be able to set this as a group task where it's important that learners talk between them and agree their solutions before actually hitting go is again another really nice way that you can use a lot of the tasks on the site. So as we said, the website is colourful and engaging and really aimed at the early end of elementary or primary learning. However, the skills carry on up through and I would be looking to make these practices part of morning or after lunch work and skills that children continue to develop as they move up through education. And that's the link to today's Reading for Learning, which is about the psychologist Carol Dweck and her book, Mindset. Now, Carol now is synonymous with growth mindset and in this book, she raises some really interesting points about the power of being open to practice and improvement over time. As she says, in a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talents are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. As she says, why waste time proving over and over how great you are when you could be getting better? Um, and this is really interesting when applied to music, and I think we've probably all spotted this over the years, that some children are naturally more musically able to start with and move more quickly through their learning or just seem to start at a higher place than others. And that can lead to the sort of behaviour that she describes like this. We like to think of our champions and idols as superheroes who were born different from us. We don't like to think of them as relatively ordinary people who made themselves extraordinary. And I can remember from being a child learning an instrument, some of the other children around me who just seem to be much better at picking it up and seem to be quicker to learn things and remember skills and notation and that kind of thing much faster. And at that time, my assumption was they just better than me. So Carol talks a lot about how this sort of mindset and thinking is counterproductive and something we want to do is to really instill in learners the idea that it doesn't matter where you're starting through practice and dedication and perseverance, you can actually move much faster than people who naturally seem to have some ability and just naturally get it. So as I flick you through my reading record, there's just a couple of other ones that really stand out to me that she said. And this is it at its simplest, isn't it? A growth mindset is belief you can develop abilities. And I really like this one as well. You have to work hardest for the things you love most. And I think that really applies to music because I know from my own children and from my experience at school and years as a teacher that for lots of children, their sanctuary, their safe place in school is around music. 
and putting in the time that it takes to develop those skills makes such a difference to them thriving and enjoying that place. And those are the children that naturally put the most effort in, but there are so many who could be pushing further and doing better than they are if we could just instill that love of learning and that belief that they can get better and that it's not an arty subject that some people can just do or not do. Carol also makes the really good point that teaching is a wonderful way to learn in itself. So I'll link to her book in the description below because I think it's a great read and although I've always had a kind of peripheral understanding of what growth mindset is and why it's a really good thing to develop, I think reading the book has taught me so much about the way I want to be as a teacher, as a parent, as, and as someone who now manages others in my role. And it is about never seeing your level of ability and attainment as being a final position but always knowing that you can move forward and just by working harder or smarter, you can add to the value you already have. You can gain new skills on top of what you can already do and you can move forward. So I've linked below to Didact Music and to Carol Dweck's Mindset book. Give them a go, see what you think and let me know in the comments. So if this video has given you value, please consider hitting the like button to help me build my credibility. And also why not hit subscribe so that you get notified when these weekly videos appear. And while you're doing that, you can see a couple of other videos on screen that you might find useful relating to this one.